So what is the Borrello test? While the ABC test is the primary test for worker classification in California, there are certain situations where that test will not apply. And in those cases, the determination is made under another set of criteria, which we call the Borrello test. This test applies a complex multifactorial approach. It requires consideration of all potentially relevant factors, but focuses, however, on the level of control the employer has over the work and the work performed. You probably noticed that this is also an overriding factor with the ABC test and the business to business exemption. Put another way, whether the potential employer has control over the manner and means of accomplishing the result desired. While the right of control must be considered with the other factors, it is essentially considered the most important factor of the Borrello test. With that, we now get into what are the Borrello factors. I have 13 factors. The first one is the employer right to control, whether the potential employer has control over the manner and means of accomplishing the results desired. This basically turns on how much or how significant of the employer's control is on how the work is done. Also, if the potential employer has the right to control the details of the work performance, regardless of whether or not that right is exercised, the person performing the services will likely be deemed to be an employee. The second factor is worker independence. This basically means whether the worker performing the services holds themselves out as being engaged in an occupation or business that's distinct from that of the employer. Third factor is worker integration, whether the work is regular or integral part of the employer's business. The fourth factor is the tools and workplace. Does the employer or the worker supply the instrumentalities, tools, and the place that the work is being done? Fifth factor is workers' investment, whether the worker has invested in the business, such as buying their own equipment, materials for the tasks that they're going to be doing. Sixth is the specialized skill of the uh, services that are being provided. Seventh is whether the work is usually done under the direction of the employer or by the specialist or the worker without any supervision. The eighth factor is the worker's risk and reward. Is there opportunity for the worker to have profit or loss depending on their skill sets? The ninth factor is the duration and permanence of the work. So the length of the time for which the services are performed the degree of permanence of the working relationship, is the work short-term or ongoing, and is the relationship expected to be long-term? The payment of method, is the worker paid bi-weekly, weekly, or is it based on completion of project or the job? Eleventh is the authority to hire. Does the worker have the ability to hire their own employees? Twelfth factor is the termination process, whether the employer has the right to fire or whether the termination gives rise to an action for breach of a contract. And finally, perception of the relationship, whether or not the worker and the potential employer believe they are creating an employer-employee relationship. However, do note that this may be relevant, but the legal determination of the employment status is not based on whether the parties believe that they are employer-employee relationship. With the Borrello factors, no single factor dominates the Borrello test. All relevant aspects must be weighed. Keep in mind that the level of control the employer has is a pretty, pretty important factor. Courts have emphasized different factors in the Borrello test depending on the circumstances. For example, where the employer does not control the work details, so this is where the control didn't really matter, but there was still an employer-employee relationship. And in those circumstances, the employer retained control over the operation as a whole. The worker's duties were in an integral part of the operation, and the nature of the work makes detailed control unnecessary. When does the Borrello test apply? The Labor Code sets forth express exceptions and lists the occupations where the ABC test does not apply and the Borrello test applies. Then there are other circumstances where the court may determine that the ABC test cannot apply for reasons other than what's expressly stated in the labor code. For example, there may be a separate law, a separate applicable federal law that preempts the applicability of the ABC test. I've listed the specific jobs that are exempted from the ABC test. Now, this is just the specific exemptions. However, there are other exceptions that apply that then determine whether or not the Borrello test applies. But before the Borrello test applies, whether you must meet other requirements before you even get to the Borrello test. Mm -hmm.